What we have here is a yard tree, an ash tree that died. And like many people, we're suffering from this invasive species, the emerald ash borer. Well, this tree just got cut a couple of days ago and I haven't had a chance to buck it up yet. But I noticed when I walked out this morning, we've got little sawdust holes. I've never seen one live and in color in person. I've only seen them in pictures. But I'm gonna see if we can dig one of these suckers out. I'm gonna call it a insect criminal. I'm going to start with a very minimally evasive procedure to surgically remove or see if we can find or if he's still a, even alive right here at this location. This shouldn't take too long. Try another location. Look at those tracks. So the rascal could be anywhere. It appears the sawdust is where he bores in, but not necessarily where he's at. Look at all those tracks. Well, I have undressed this whole side of this log and all I can find is tracks, trails, looks like a river. And the only thing live that I've found were these ants. and they've left town by now. There are these holes like this right here. I don't really see anything in that hole. A little ant came out. Maybe that's it. Maybe they're microscopic. I guess that's it. Right there at the end of my finger. I know this much. You would think in bearing a, a log that much, you'd see more live critters. Now there's a worm. He ain't doing much. I don't know guys, let me know in the comments what your experience is.
I can tell you this, in my search for the devilish criminal emerald lash bore, I don't, can't say that I ever positively 1,000% ID'd one, okay? But I can tell you when I was cutting these up into firewood sticks, I did see a couple of insects about that long move like lightning. And I'm pretty sure that's what they were. I'm going to tell you, they were fast. They were fast as grease lightning. And they were actually more up in the limb sections than they were in the trunk. But I've got here in my yard, I've got this one here. Now, like I said, I had this in prune. You can see that prune limb off of it right there back in the spring before the leaves come out. And doggone if it don't look like it's, I don't know what difference it made, but it looks like it may even gonna be surviving. I don't know. And then right over here, I've got two more that they're over 50% leafless. This is one, this is the biggest one at the stump. Uh, they're about probably 85 footers. That's probably close to 30 inches. But I've figured out a plan. I think I can take that one down without calling in a tree service to top it for me. And then this one here, <coughs> it too, it's about a 90 footer. And I've taken some limbs off of this load side here so i think i'm going to be able to drop it gonna mess up a few pine branches but i think i'm going to be able to drop it either way i'm going to tell you and it's not just here in the south that actually began my understanding up north began uh, maybe around michigan or something is where they started dying and i want to show you before I let you go, I want to show you three trees down here at my neighbor's. He, I talked to him the other day. Not JC, my neighbor, my other neighbor, which is the neighbor to JC and me. I talked to him about taking these down. I told him I'd want to wait till after the yellow jackets are in the ground. Let me just run you down here and show you these trees. Now, I said there was three but actually I think there's four right here this one is covered in poison the tops broke out of it but it's uh, it's a good 30 inches at the base I don't know if you can see with the sun glare or not and then there's this one here and it it's one of them 110 footers and uh, here again it's it's covered in poison. But it's one of them 30 plus inches. And then there's another one right over there. And it's, I'll just have to back up, but it is. It's 125 to 30 feet tall it's massive so we're talking truckloads of ash right here and then here's another one it's too big for the mill that's getting up close to 40 inches in diameter looked like somebody started to cut it at one time I don't know about that one Tops broke out of it. But it's still got leaves on it. I don't know. I mean, these trees that are, are pruned off, for some reason, they're looking. Let me show you one more. Honestly, this one, it's so big, and it is down in the woods. I don't even know that I want to fool with it.
but it is massive. I'm not going to go down in the woods right now. You, that one right over there, it's 40 inches at the stump. But you're talking about some saw logs. But the boars have killed it. That is four o'clock. Right there's another one right beside it. Doggone, I didn't even. Right down there is. Well, no, those are poplars. But anywho, the kid's not going to run out of ash to cut. That's not what this is about. This is about trying to discover what the emerald ash borer looks like. There are pesticides. I've done a little research on it. There are pesticides that you can use to help eradicate them in your yard. But as far as in the forest, um, we're going to have to leave it to God and nature. Anyhow, that's a report on the, the destructive emerald ash borer from North Carolina. Let me know how things are in your region, what you've seen. Have you seen what I've seen, that a tree that has been pruned seems to have some kind of resistance? I don't know, or if, it, or if the tops broke out, it seems to have some kind of resistance. I don't know. Or if it's close to a certain other kind of species and, and it's living. I don't know, but I'm curious. If you got any information you can share with, the, with me and with the others who are interested, I think that'd be, be pretty helpful and pretty nice. Well, thank you for joining me on this science experiment. It didn't, it didn't deliver the results that I was expecting, but you know, that's the way science experiments are out there. Sometimes you come up with nothing.